is like a machine that is constantly generating thoughts. Thoughts are little bundles of energy that have a tremendous impact upon us. There is so much of energy in the atmosphere. You can't see it, but if you take a transistor set and start turning the knob, you will catch station after radio station. It shows that these waves were present in the atmosphere. Similarly, our thoughts are also like subtle waves. They impact us in so many ways. First of all, they impact our appearance. You look at somebody and say, why are you so sad today? That person's thoughts created the appearance of sadness. And you look at somebody else and say, oh, your feet are not falling on the ground. What's the good news? Again, the thoughts changed the appearance. So these thoughts at present are not in control or focus. I like to give the analogy of the television set of olden days. In the 1970s, when the television had just come out in India, we used to have these uh, very basic kind of sets where a channel would come up, then it would disappear. And then another channel would come up and that would disappear. And sometimes the channel would start slipping or lines would appear. In the same way is our mind. We think of something and then something else and then a third thing and back to the first thing. Now, why is this happening inside? If a car is out of control, it goes here, then there, then returns, you would say there are two possibilities. Either the machinery is defective, the axle rod is broken and hence the steering wheel has lost control over the wheels, or else the machinery is perfect, but the driver is inebriated. And that is why he is not controlling the car. Similarly, if our thoughts are not properly channeled, there is one of two possibilities. Either the machinery is defective or else we are not controlling it properly. Now, any of us who is listening to this talk doesn't have defective machinery. Otherwise, there's a very remote chance that you would care to listen to this. The greater probability is that we have not learned to manage the machinery of the mind. So how do you manage this machinery? In this regard, there are two yogic schools of thought. Primarily, of course, there are subdivisions. But in the Vedic system, there is Jnana Yoga and there is Bhakti Yoga. Jnana Yoga states that thinking is giving problems to you. Stop the thinking process. Reduce your thinking, reduce your thinking. And in this way, from the cervical state, make your mind nirvikal. Make it thoughtless. Man kumar to beda par. Now, the bhakti path takes a different perspective. It says, to make this mind thoughtless, is extremely difficult. 
it is next to impossible rather than doing that you divert the mind towards god it's just like you are driving a bicycle now if you say i wish to stop the forward movement by applying my brakes it becomes an unstable condition you will either fall to the left or the right you can't retain your balance but instead if you just turn the handle the forward movement will stop because the bike is now moving in this direction similarly bhakti yog states don't stop thinking think of god make your mind krishna way divine what is the problem with the path of gyan yog it's extremely difficult the nature of this mind is such that it constantly keeps working and to bring it to a state where it stops working is unnatural to the functioning of the mind there is the beautiful illustrative story of a sadhu who used to live up in the himalayas and beyond in tibet his name was milarepa in the nearby village a rumor spread that this sadhu has a siddh mantra if you chant it you will get siddhis or mystic abilities one villager came up to his monastery and he said sir i have heard you have a siddh mantra if we chant it we get mystic abilities can you please give it to me milarepa said i don't have any such siddh mantras my intent of spirituality is different satchit paryo dapanam etam buddha anushasanam the buddha said the goal is to purify the mind and not learn how to walk on water or transpolate objects the villager said sir you are avoiding me until you give me the mantra i will not move from your ashram milarepa said so be it what do i care but after 24 hours his sadhana started getting disturbed he said my dear fellow you are causing a nuisance to me can you please leave the villager said sir i am willing to die but i will not leave without the mantra milarepa thought how to get rid of this man now so he said all right i'll give you the siddh mantra really he was all ears tell me sir the siddh mantra is om om it's a siddh mantra yes if you chant it you will get mystic abilities but there is a condition to it don't bring any monkeys to your mind what do you mean i mean don't think of any monkeys henceforth otherwise all this chanting will become useless the villager said sir i have never thought of monkeys all my life why should i start thinking of them now milarepa said i have cautioned you now it's up to you the man returned from there with a sense of accomplishment now i have the sib mantra i just need to chant om 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 and not think of monkeys what should i not think of monkeys what was the consequence he is doing om 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 one portion of the mind is acting like the operator chant om om and the other portion of the mind is acting like the monitor am i thinking of monkeys or not what is the consequence he was doing om om don't think of monkeys om om the mind said is there a monkey watching me from behind he looked back oh no there was no monkey my god what did i do i thought of a monkey all my chanting has become useless all right this time i'll chant om om 
and not think of monkeys. So he was walking back home, Om, Om, don't think of monkeys, Om, don't think of monkeys, don't think of monkeys, don't think of monkeys. And then he said, are there monkeys on the street there? Oh my God, they were human beings, I did it once again. Now the more he would scold his mind, the more disturbed his mind would become. And what was the consequence? He started seeing monkeys everywhere. His thoughts became monkey mind. He said, things are getting out of control. Let me go home, take a cold water bath and then with a fresh mind, I'll chant Om Om and not think of monkeys. However, while taking the bath, he thought he saw a monkey there. He said, where did you get in from? The wife said, my dear husband, who's got in? This monkey, monkey in the restroom? No, 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 it's got into my mind. So he had his bath, he said, all right, nevertheless, let me go to my puja room and pick up the rosary beads and chant Om Om without thinking of monkeys. However, when he reached the altar, he thought he saw a big monkey sitting there with the rosary saying Om Om. He lost to his mind. He went back to the sage Milarepa and said, Sir, this mantra you gave me, please take it back. Give it to me in my next life. But don't tell me that I should not think of monkeys or I will definitely think of them. So such is the nature of this monkey mind. In the Ramayana, Goswami Tulsidas Ji Maharaj, the writer of the Ram Charit Mana states, Graha grihi ta puni bata vasha ta puni bichi mara puni piaya varuni kahiya kaha upachar. He says a monkey is by nature restless. And if you tie a scorpion to its tail, it becomes even more agitated. On top of that, if it has got hysteria, Think of its situation and further you make it drink some intoxicating intellect destroying alcohol. What will be the condition of that monkey? That, O oh Lord Ram, is the condition of my mind. Now for that mind you say, okay, stop the thinking process. There are great chances it will think even more. And that is why. The process given in the Vedic scriptures, in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, Manmana bhava man bhakto madhyaji maam namaskuru. This is the only line that has come twice in the 700 verses of the Bhagavad Gita. Lord Krishna says, Arjun, don't stop thinking. Divert the mind to God. Learn to see this world is belonging to him. Learn to see him in everybody. Learn to see yourself as the servant of God. Learn to do everything as an offering unto him. Not only will your material thoughts stop, but your life will become divine and it will be an offering at the altar of the Supreme Lord. That then is the way to uplift this mind and make our lives blessed. Mm -hmm.